Welcome to Electro Online. Now let's take a look at that mysterious 3 to 2 coupling between the orbital period and the rotational period of Mercury. Now let's try to figure out why that is actually happening. In other words, it takes 88 days for Mercury to take one trip around the Sun, and it takes exactly two thirds of that time to, for, for Mercury to make one rotation on its axis. So it takes one and a half times as long to make one trip around the Sun for Mercury as it does to take one rotation on its axis. Why is that? Well, there's two reasons for it. One, there's a very elliptical orbit. So Mercury has an extremely elliptical orbit so that it's much closer to the Sun at perihelion and much further away at aphelion. Secondly, the mass distribution and the shape of Mercury isn't a perfect spherical object. There's actually an elongation to that planet, not as severe as the one we drew on the board, but it gives you an idea. So it's a little bit longer in one direction than the other direction. So when Mercury is rotating on its axis, as it's going around its axis, when the one side is pointing towards the Sun, this side of Mercury will be attracted towards the Sun much greater than the far side of Mercury because it's farther away. There's a relationship of 1 over the distance cubed and therefore there will be a tendency for the Sun to pull Mercury in alignment like this at the point where the effect is the greatest which happens when Mercury is at perihelion. So because of the gravitational forces, the strongest difference between the force of this side of Mercury being pulled to the Sun and the force of this side of Mercury being pulled to the Sun, the difference between those is greatest at the moment that Mercury passes through perihelion. And so it's locked into that. And when Mercury is the farthest away from the Sun, then the forces will be equal to each other because then you see the, the planet is aligned like this, so the two ends that are farthest away from the center then have an equal distance to the Sun. So because of the gravitational forces, there's the strongest attraction on this side when it's like this, when it's at perihelion close to the Sun, and there's an equal force of attraction when it's farther away from the Sun. And that will then give it the lowest energy orbit state that it can be in, and therefore it's forced into that particular situation. So now let's take a closer look at it. Let's say that we start over here, and one then is pointing to the Sun. This side is being pulled to the Sun more strongly than this side. But since Mercury rotates on its axis, it will access through an angle, it will rotate through an angle of 135 degrees, which is one and a half times the distance it travels through its orbital motion, which is only a 90 degree motion. You can then see that that elongated end is then past this vertical point right here, still this side will be attracted more strongly than this side because it's closer to the Sun than this, but not quite as different as it is over here. It will continue to rotate, and by the time it gets to the point that's farthest away, the aphelion, then you can see the two forces are equal and it's positioned exactly like this. It will continue to rotate around 135 degrees when it goes through a 90 degree motion in its orbit, then it's oriented like this, and then this side will get pulled more strongly towards the Sun than this side, will keep the rotation going and by the time the planet Mercury gets back in the original position 88 days later now you can see that this side will not be pointing in the opposite direction and the back side will not pointing in this direction but the effect will be exactly the same because the shape is roughly the same and you can see that this motion will just continue as it goes around and around so for one trip around Mercury the planet will rotate exactly one and a half times and will keep doing that as long as Mercury is around and as long as the Sun around for about another 5 billion years until the Sun becomes a red giant and will swallow up Mercury, Mercury will disappear, will vaporize. But for the next 5 billion years, Mercury will be doing that because it's locked in that lock, in that rotational and orbital lock of 3 to 2 relationship. And that's the way it's going to be for a long time to come.